So I made a mistake in the last video. I apologize. Let me fix it now. I said const here, and I said const here, and I said that these are compile time values, but they are not. They are not compile time until I say static. Uh, and the reason why I probably did not say static naturally is because I do a lot of C-sharp programming as well. And in C-sharp, when you say const, static is implied. Now, I don't want to go into all the details of the difference between having const and static here and vice versa, but I will say that C-sharp, uh, if I take the static off this, then this is a lot like C-sharp's read-only keyword. But once I put the static on this, this is just like C-sharp's const keyword, and const means static in C-sharp. Anyway, it's important that I say static because it's a compile time value. The compiler needs these values, as I talked about in the uh, last video. It needs to know these values in order to know how much room to define for the program image when our process is loaded in the uh, operating system's process space. Anyway, so very important that these are static. Okay, we have this profile category with the the arrays. We have several uh, an array of several categories, and each category keeps track of its samples. Just a little review here that categories here is basically it's this array like so. This array here keeps track of all the categories, but embedded inside that array, each individual category keeps track of its own samples. All right, so that's what this inner array is about is each each category is going to keep track of the floats that make up these samples. Now our unit test is testing for this, but I want to go back to the slightly more realistic data even though the numbers would vary a lot more than what I have here. Uh, I'm going to use this to to do the teaching from here on out. And I'm going to double click on these column separators to automatically resize the columns to the length of the longest value within the column. Okay. Uh, we did initialize, storing away the file name. We will use that file name in the shutdown function to write out our comma-separated file. Uh, but for now, we need to do new frame and add entry. Now, new frame just basically keeps track of what frame we're on. This frame, then this frame, then this frame, then this frame, then this frame. And, and so we're assuming that the consumer of the profiler class will call new frame at the beginning of every frame, just like we did with the clock class when we were implementing those functions. So that said, we need, to keep, we need a way to keep track of what frame we're on so that we can move through uh, this array, these several arrays like that. So let's do it. Uh, unsigned int, what should we call it, frame index and what shall we start that out at frame index I'm going to start it out at negative one because I'm assuming they're going to call new frame before they actually start sending us entries okay so right now we'll start at negative one kind of this one before the actual frames then when they call new frame that'll bump us into the first frame of our profiling okay and then we need a variable to keep track of what category we're on. So we're going to go frame by frame, but then within the frames, we're going to do this, and then we're going to do this, and then we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. And so we need another integer to keep track of that, which uh, unsigned int, let's call it cate category index to be consistent with our frame index. And that value, I'm actually going to start out at zero. Now you can see here I'm getting the red squigglies. It's IntelliSense. It's frustrating. I'm going to control shift B just to prove to you that IntelliSense is having issues and the compiler is just fine with what we've written here. I believe I showed you in a previous video you can delete the IntelliSense database and force IntelliSense to rebuild it, but I don't want to bother with that right now. I'm kind of used to IntelliSense not helping me out very much in C++, although in C Sharp it does a great job. That's where all the a lot of Microsoft's time and money is going. Um, let's see here. We want to uh, implement the new frame. So a new frame, it's pretty easy. I'm going to say frame index plus plus. And then on every frame, category index, we want to reset that back to zero. So if you've ever used a typewriter, you typically type, type, type to the end of the line, and then you hit the handle and it goes, Chur, ch ching. that's what we're doing is move on to the next line and rewind back to the zero, the, the beginning of the line. All right, when they call add entry, we basically, well, this one's a little more interesting because when we first start profiling, we know nothing. 
We don't know how many categories they're going to give us. We don't know what those category names are. We don't know anything at that point. But then after they give us the first frame, I'm going to delete this down here, we, we know the category names. And on every subsequent uh, profile or frame, on every subsequent frame, we expect these names to be the same. That's a stringent requirement we're having of our profiler. It's a very rough pro profiler, but we're expecting um, that they profile the same categories every single frame in the same order. Now, we, could we make it more flexible? Yes. Will we? Probably. Later, uh, much later down the video pipeline here. For now, I just want to start out with a basic bare bones. Let's ensure that we get the same categories every frame. And then as they go along and this, they give us the next frame, we're going to get new numbers, obviously. But the actual category names should be identical to what they gave us before. And there should be the exact same number of them in the exact same order that they did in the previous frame. So the first frame is special. We need to keep track of these categories. We also need to keep track of how many there are and in what order. So whew, let's do that. I'm going to say profile category reference P. Actually, we'll call it PC. Profile category gets, we call it categories here. So categories sub, uh, what are we doing? Category index plus plus. So I'm going to grab a reference to the current category that we're on, and in the meantime, we're going to increment the index because we're not going to need, or we are not going to need it anymore until we come into the next add entry call. Uh, what do we want to do? Well, let's just assume we're on the first frame. I'm going to say pc.name gets the category. I probably should have called this category name. Yeah, I'm tempted. Yeah, whatever. Category, and then pc dot samples sub frame index since thank you for being useless uh, gets time alright I hope that makes sense what I'm doing here basically grabbing the current category remember we're going to move our way through the uh, comma separated file like this I'm grabbing the current category this instance of an object and in the current row or frame index that we're on. The frame index keeps track of these rows here. If I can mark them. Um, and the current frame index, we're going to store away that time. So pretty simple. This this will work fine and dandy. Well, this, in theory, would work for every single frame. But this is our profiler. I want to be sure that we're getting the right data that we're expecting. I want to ensure that, that we're use, being used correctly. I want to log or flag an error if we're not being used correctly uh, simply to enhance the development and debugging time of those who consume this class, which, by the way, will be us. But if I was working in a team, the more I can tell my team members, the faster, the better, because that uh, speeds up. Uh, that, that, that takes away the amount of time they have to waste going into my code and figuring out what's going on. So this is only really good... Uh, for the first frame. I want it good for every frame. Uh, we know every frame we're going to keep track of the time. There's nothing special to do there. But on the first frame, uh, we're going to uh, we're going to store the category away. But on subsequent frames, we want to ensure that, hey, this is frame two. And last time on frame one, you gave me a category name called building transformation matrices. I want to be sure that you're giving me that exact same name again here. So, we need to do a check, and I kind of hate doing special checks for the first frame, but I really don't know. Uh, we could probably redesign our architecture here and not have to do this check, but for now I'm just going to do the check. Uh, frame index is zero, then store away the category like so. Uh, else, we know that we're not on the first frame index. So I want to ensure that they gave us the same category that they did last time. So I'm going to say assert, which maybe we don't have the pound include for. I'm going to pound include assert right here. C assert. We're going to later replace the assert with our own assertion functions so that we can do some logging and some debugging. Uh, but for now, I'll just use the built-in one. Uh, assert that stir compare. Now, I believe I don't have string. Pound include string. I really thought it was C standard 
lib to do stir comp, but from what I can find, it looks like it's string, which kind of doesn't make sense to me because this is a C function call. Maybe I'm incorrect now. You can go look that up and throw something in the comments for me. Uh, let's see. We're going to assert that pc.name, the name you gave me last time, and the name you're giving me this time are equal. Now I'm using a stir compare because I don't want to compare pointers to the data. I want to actually compare the actual string data. Now, as a side note, I need to tell you something though. Uh, when we use this profiler, we're going to just pass string literals in, uh, kind of like, I don't know, this is my category name. We're going to pass them like that. And it turns out if I take this literal and this is kind of a bad place to write it. Let me write it down here. If I say uh, char star c1 gets this and char star c2 gets that. Well, the compiler is smart enough to realize, hey, this is the same string literal as what you had here. So the compiler will do something called string in interning, which basically it stores the string once, and then C1 and C2 will both point to the single instance of that string inside the program image. There's no point in wasting room by having the same string literal stored twice in the program image. So in theory, I could compare pointers right here, and I'd probably be okay. In fact, I probably should, because I'm the one using this profiler. Um, I'm the one using this profiler, and I'm going to pass string literals in. So I'm actually going to do that. You know what? Let's get rid of that. I'm going to compare pointers. And I know that if I end up actually not using string literals for my profiling, which I highly doubt, doubt I will, but if I don't, then this assert will blow up and catch it for me, and I can come back in here and add my string compare again. I need to get rid of the include for string because we're no longer doing the stir compare. Let me do control shift B. Let's see if we're building. Build succeeded. I think we're good. There might be errors in here, but I'm actually feeling pretty good about it. Maybe you're seeing an error as you watch me program and say, Jamie, you're forgetting this. You're forgetting this. Well, I'll find it soon enough. Uh, in the next video, we're going to implement our shutdown function to actually write out the data. The actual data we're using for our unit tests is this data. Uh, let's actually control F5 this and ensure that our unit tests are still failing because we have not implemented the shutdown function yet. We're going to do that in the next video.